What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. But this is an album review. Today we have Basie. He has his new album, King Bass. Right now we're going to review it with him himself. What's going on, Basie? Yo, what's going on? It's, it's a pleasure. If thanks for having me on the show, you know what I mean? Thank you for pulling up again, you know what I mean? Yeah, it feel like family now. I mean, uh, the last time we spoke, I did mention that um, the album was coming and I would love to come back on the show. And so here we are now, the album is out. So thanks for having me again. Definitely. Right now, so the album's out. King Bass, when did the album come out? The album was released June 3rd, 2022. Um, I, I, I wanted to drop it right before the summer event started and my tour and all of that. So I dropped it the first week of June and it's doing pretty well so far. So look forward to going on the road and, um, promoting it to the masses, you know? All right. And what was it like actually producing and recording an album like this, especially the last two years we've had in the pandemic, how easy or how hard was it to produce this album? Um, it was easy in the sense of the creative process because, um, one, you know, when people locked up in the house, not going anywhere, um, for some people that's frustrating, but for me, that's when I get most creative, just being in solitude. So it was easier for me to make the music. And then I was envisioning going back to the streets, going back to the party them. So the music is coming across with a lot more, um, love and respect and homage for the streets and for the dance and uh, music and for the the girls them and you know just i'm just in a bigger zone because you won't get you won't let it out so that was good for me and also for in the preparing process um i find that people were more willing to work because nothing was happening so you know whether it's producers whether it's graphic designers everybody came on board hands on full deck like um you know let's make this happen so i found that it was a really cool energy you know Good to go. And what would you say is the biggest difference between your previous album, Holy Temple, and this one here right now, King Bass? Well, Holy Temple is a complete different thing to this. Like, it's a whole different, um, it's a spiritual project, and it was definitely me showing um, everything else I can do but what is on um, King Bass. So people know me for a particular persona from TOK, and when I went solo, I wanted to do everything else with that. I wanted to sing, I wanted to do spiritual music, I didn't want any features. I wanted to use um, mainly um, international producers. I wanted to go and shoot it in Israel and on the top of the Alps, and you know, just very creative. Um, but that was just me showing the full dynamism of the brand. I, I wanted to show that to the market. But I knew right after that that I wanted to come back with a dance uh, album where people know me for and, you know, fitting back to the TOK vibe and what BSC brought to TOK. So that the big difference is just like the tempo that was more slower music. This is up tempo. The content is more about party and girl and, you know, going for the money and all of that kind of culture as opposed to culture music, which what Holy Temple was. So, yeah, they're different vibes. Got you. So you'd say this brought you back to your dance hall roots. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, the oxymoron is, is, is hilarious, the dance hall roots. But yeah, for sure. I, I left the dance hall, I went to the roots, and now I'm back to my dance hall. Roots. Yeah. Got you. Because this album here is 17 tracks, interludes, interviews with Shani B, features and everything. Because you said the first one didn't have any features. It was totally different. So then why would you decide, to, okay, 17 tracks? Because that's a big body of work right now. Um, well, yeah, so it, it all came together. Um, and I want to say there are many more songs that didn't make the album outside of the 17. But I'm, I'm more working off for the number seven. I'm, I'm a person that follow numbers. And even though it's 17 tracks, it's really seven, it's like 14 songs. And um and three interludes and the three is like the trinity so it's still for me numbers really add up you know um, and why i wanted 14 was because I, not only the seven but um all the features that came on i didn't want to drop off any feature i feel like everybody that came on had their um showed their support for the project and if you have i think i, I have probably six or seven features on the album so if i did that alone they would have done at um, 14, then the three internals make it 17. Got you. Okay, you're talking about features because this was not in your last album. This one has about seven, you said right now. Mm -hmm. So then let's talk about some of your features here. The first yeah. one I want to talk about is Bad Man Town with Bounty Killer. Our Lord. Yes, this one seems like it's almost like an updated 
rub-a-dub dance rub-a-dub roots rhythm that you guys put together how did you guys come up with that one there ah uh, well for that for bad man tone i big up riff raff you know um i think my album was like probably 80 percent completed and you know i sent it out to a few people you know some musicians that i really revere their opinion and their talent and he was one of them i sent it to and he was like yo it missing this um i want to come work on a pro- on a track with you and i'm like let's do it and then he came to berlin i was in berlin at the time because most of the tracks probably half of the album recorded in berlin um and we went in the studio and he just came with the beat you know he built it from scratch and then we worked on the chorus from scratch and it was a real it's like how songs are really made back in the day where you, you come in the studio and start build a beat, beat for a specific project and then you build a song and then when we finish the song now it's like yo we need a feature and i just reach out to bounty and bounty like quick quick no no delay um i'm sending about the the which i was so humble but I, i'm appreciative of because i know killer d with a bag of voicing now and i work on him album so him to give me the full strength man um, and then it was mixed off by Riff Raff and then mastered with the full album by um, Ricky Hype. So it's it's different hands in the project, but it's it's um, I think because what one of the projects that one of the songs that the project needed, which was at one point it was too much girl song, so we needed to balance it out with like some street music and some hardcore stuff, you know. That's how you came up with your another feature that you had was um Bungie Garland um from Morning. Yeah. Okay. This is more like a, a world feel, Zumba world feel. How did you guys come up with this one here now? Well, I forbid of the producer for that DJ Moise because we actually recorded that song on a different beat, but what he did with it was really exceptional. So um the backstory of, of that song was that it was supposed to be um Basie, Bungie Garland and Assassin. Um, Sasko is the only artist that never met the that I reach out to that never make it in time and it wasn't any vibe, it was just that timing, you know. Um so when we when I got Bungie verse and put it together, I was like, Bungie, we can run with this by itself, no come and I think Sasko will make it for the timeline. And I was like, Yeah, I'm good with it. Um and then the producer took the acapella and went in the lab and when he came back with it, I was like, all right, cool. And at first I was like, um, I'm testing with the market and uh, I sent it out and with a feeler, like probably the third version of the album. And everybody was coming back and saying, yo, this is another top three rare area. So I was like, all right, the the, the data speaks that the song is a so- solid song. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, another collaboration that's on the album here is um, Christopher Martin, Do You Write. How did yeah. you guys come up with this one here now? Um, that one I had written the song in its entirety, um, and I, I, I was doing a little trying out for the chorus, singing the chorus myself. But as I mentioned, like Holy Temple was me showing that I can sing, but that doesn't mean that you have to sing everything. You know what I mean? So after we, after I recorded that, I think I recorded that one in London. After I recorded it, um, I reached out to different singers to to try the hook. Um, and then Chris, like when Chris did it, it was just like, yeah, this is perfect. Um, so that one is actually one of the well-received ones as well. And um, we're hoping for that one to even, you know, do its commercial success in Oka. Chris is a superstar. Bass is a superstar. So I, I'm hoping that it hit the stars, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like that. Okay, and another one. This one here is um, an artist off of your label here, Bombers Records, which yeah. is Cindy Lloyd. How can I? How did you guys come up with this one here? Now? All right, so Cindy Lloyd now is the first female artist signed to Bombers Records, my label. Um, she's super talented. Uh, great writer, you know, great image. Like when you look at the Moonlight video, she's uh, playing the lead female in the video and she just, she just has this presence on the camera. So um, I knew that I needed to have her on the album. And, you know, I had put together, the beat came from Tufik and Flo in Germany, Dancehall Rulers. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of just put together a song that would sound like what a relationship sound like if the guy did bad because i knew i had songs on the album like bad bitch and you know done that a trail may i live the girlish life and whatever so i kind of flip it for that one to say if a girl is listening to it and say yo i thought basically it was just like a cool dude this is no switching the story like okay i did you wrong um this is what a girl would probably be saying how can i trust you again you know um and me kind of saying i'm sorry kind of vibe so that kind of fit with the whole concept of bringing her out on the project. Um, there was kind of a natural mi- um, mix. What she's, what she represents as a female of Bomb Rush, 
and what the song was representing as um as a man saying to him, man, my bad, let me let me try the better next time kind of thing. So this is another feature, but not even just a feature. This is actually linking back with the family TOK. And you actually got you guys did two songs on the yeah. album here. The first one is Why Pre and Tough Guy. How did you guys come up with Why Pre? All right, Why Pre was one that we had in the vault from before, you know. Um, the song was actually produced by my label Bomb Rush. And I have quite a few TOK songs um unreleased in the vault. So this was the one that I felt like fit the dance hall energy. Um, and for the 90s original TOK, because TOK bust with more Badman song before we went commercial, you know, so I wanted to take it back to the roots. Um, and that's why we did Y Pre. But once I had the idea of doing it, you now I'd kind of just drop it in the in the WhatsApp group and, you know, humbly ask the members if they would mind getting on the album. And everybody was just like full spirit, 100%, like, yeah, man. So, yo, we find this, this bad, we want to change this, we want to change that. Um, and then everyone work on their part and we put it together and then it was mixed by Kamal and, and mastered by Richie hype. So I'm pretty excited about it. Okay. And the next one here, tough guy, how did you guys come up with tough guy now? All right. So tough guy now is produced by this super, super, um, amazing group from South Italy called suits own system. You know, they're like, like what Run DMC is to hip hop, that's what they are to the Italian dancehall space. They're the foundation that really built out an Italian dancehall space. And they're always connecting with TOK. We and them have some hits in Italy as well. Um, so he, the, the, the lead of the group, I would say, uh, a guy named Fabio, he sent the beat. Actually, he has that beat for like maybe two years, probably even like the start of the pandemic. And even before the pandemic, it was just like, yo, way out for this rhythm, way out for this rhythm, way out for this rhythm. So um again my process of making the album is just to take beats from all over the place and and kind of say all right um this would fit the album that would fit the album and when i heard it i was like all right yeah this could work and i wrote the song wrote the chorus wrote some verses and then also shared it with the group and everybody was like yeah i'm like that too so i was like yo am i getting one tok song for the album or two and everybody was like yo run with way i run with the brother so i ended up just putting on um, the two of them on the album one uh, in the album and one like a bonus track yeah no definitely that's good to see you guys still have that type of energy together you know what i mean yeah man for sure man shout out um flex alex and credit team man i'm a general them, man. definitely and this brings us to your title track mula and this even has visuals to go with it too why did you decide to say okay this is the one that you want to run with from the album all right, there's a story about Eminem when he was doing the second album and he had everything. He had the stand record, he had everything put down. And then him and Dr. Dr. Dre then the student are like, yo, we need the we need a radio record. Um and then that's when they did it. Pum, 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 pum. I'm slim shady, yes, I'm the real shady. So with my album, I felt like I was right there, like I had some good songs, but I wasn't clear. What is the first song that will come out? What is the song that will have the most impact? Like sounding fresh, sounding modern, almost disruptive to what people expect of T of Basie from TOK. Um, and that was the last song to be recorded. Um, the producer is a super, super talented producer named King Blizzy. Um, Toots, Toots Hibbert's grandson, actually. Uh, yeah, bad, 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 bad producer, you know? Um, and he might have the sound of the next generation. And I've always been around and I could hear Andrew Blacks and say Andrew Blacks have a shot, you know. Or I could hear Dunwell and say Dunwell have a shot, you know. Everybody was shot. But could I hear it from before and said them have a fresh sound that way work? Um and that's how I feel about his production, you know. And him him actually produced with a big song already still, but he might have enough more for proof to them. So when I heard the beat and the song came to me, I was just like, yo, this is it because I want something that will be relevant to the nowadays market, you know? I don't want to just have something where someone reminiscent of 20 years ago. I want somewhere a kid, a 12-year-old kid now can hear this and say, this is fresh, who is this? Um, and even my flow on it is totally different from the traditional basic flow, you know? Um, so that's why, you know, the beat different, um, the song is different. It's, uh, it's relatable because everybody's out there hustling for money one way or the other. Um, and and then what, what happened is that I shot the video, I shot the original video and the video was not up to my standard at all. So this video that's out now is a second shooting of the video. Like I spent the whole budget, do a video, 
And when we look back on it, I was like, yo, the beat have a certain standard, the song have a certain standard. Um, and I was watching Kanye documentaries, same do like a couple versions of Jesus Walks video before it came out. And I was like, yo, I have, to have that level of dedication to my art. So let me go for this amazing director called Mar Marco Polo from, from um, Germany. Um, he flew in and him bring that song and the album to life, you know, that visual, the whole vi the video, the promos, the the everything that him do, the, him even do some some um, still pictures and boy, I definitely want to take off my hat to die you there because him really helped put the icing on the cake. Like we have a lot of things. I did have the three six to shoot. I did have a lot of things, but that was just the icing that the album needed to say, all right, ready to go for the summer, you know. Definitely, you could see it. It's very. It has that type of energy. And what I like is, even though you're an artist from say '90s, early 2000s, and stuff like, that, you're on the trap dance hall. But what it is with what you did now, you brought the production level way up there. So it didn't <laughs> sound. It didn't sound like it was just something you're doing. The production level was crazy with the voices, the beat, everything. You said, okay, if you're gonna play in this space here, at least I'm gonna do it at a high level. Exactly, exactly. It should be something that anybody around the world put it in any speaker, put it on, put on, and just, okay, this sound like it's on a level, you know, you don't want substandard in any part of the process, you know. Big dear. And then this is the last random song that I'm going to talk to you about off the album oh. here, which is one called Xena. And you see that now, now you brought it back to the 90s and that right. kind of vibe there. Talk yeah. about that one there, how you came up with that. Xena. Um, well, you know, <laughs> funny enough, um, it was a mistake. And then everybody in the studio was like, yo, this body that I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, let's run with it. So what happened is that the beat was called Zena, right? Or something along that line. So when I saw the Zena instrumental, I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going and the rhythm player, player, I said, Zena, I'm like that talk then, you know, and they don't know what I was, I said, oh, I'm a Jenna. But I can say, all right, I'm a real, real, real Jenna. Then I call him a Zena. Some of the DJ and say, Zena, new style when me have a name Zena. Everybody's like, yo, where you find that? And for me, I never, I never question the, the process. If some, if the people say this bad, but just run with it. So I just end up, it's just like almost like a freestyle song, you know? Um, and then the second verse, no, I'm a draw back for the, um, the creep and that original style where be laugh for, you know, um, which is that TOK classic. Um, so yeah, and even now, even now, if you check the stats like on the Spotify and so forth, it is one, it's in the top three most streamed songs of the album. So I give thanks again, you know. Uh, to me, it's just like, you have your Jenna them, but you're real, real Jenna them. You call them your Zena, isn't it? Um, yeah, man, I that, I that, I that are that the thing. And then the beat is like, of course, original dance hall. So it, it brings you back to that space as well, you know. Yeah, we definitely, on this album here, we got to see so much growth where you grew a lot, plus you brought them back. Everything was good. Production value, the lyrics, everything, the delivery style, right on top. Respect, man. I appreciate that. And I know you're a top musicologist, so for you for say that, I, I humbly appreciate that, man. For sure. I know you're in the NFT space. Are we going to see anything NFT-wise when it comes to this album here? Yeah, for sure. We're, gonna drop a, we're doing a drop in August for the album. It may have um, a select amount of NFTs and it will be two layers. One for the sound system culture, the DJs that can get like a pack. So you get the, the traditional album, but you can also can unlock some acapellas. You can get some um, opportunity to do official remixes and commercially sell them on your own. Um, and then you also get um, dub plates. Uh, basically, the NFT will come with dub plates, so we can always do a shout, shout out for you, I do one of the songs off the album for you as a dub plate. Um, and then the higher level now is a, is a basic live that's going to be for a limited amount of fans who really like the live performances of basic and so them say, all right, I won't have this and it will give you lifetime access to our concerts. So between that one and the other one, it's going to be um, people who are true basic fans, um, have them be able to dive into this experience more. Good to go. Last one I got for you here. This album here, King Bass, when listened to it, what do you want the people listening to it to take away from it the most? Um, that's a that's a great question. Um, if I could have one takeaway, I just want it to be so magnetic that people um automatically want to add it to their playlist and you know, play it on and on and on. And if they're in a down vibe, the album can pick them up. 
if they're um, seeking some 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 um, depth, there are songs like Gangsta Prayer on it to give them some depth. Um, I want it to be, you know, one of your classics. I hope that people eventually find it as one of their classics that once they put it in, they don't have to skip, they don't have to jump. It's a journey and it's a high energy um, experience for dancehall. And if it's one word I want people to leave with it, it's just like it's modern, you know, it's fresh, that kind of vibe. Yeah. That was the emphasis. You wanted to make sure that it had that 2022 type of feel to it. Yeah, I didn't want it to sound like, oh, that sounds like him still there in a 2006, you know. Um, and and the thing is, <clears throat> because it's because I'm a genuinely an artist that's loving the new flavor and always trying to make new music, um, it fits my energy because this is just this is just an ice this tip of the iceberg, you know. I feel like there's so much more to do with me and trap and dancehall and you know, drill and all these different songs that are out there. I, I, because of my route coming from a rapper to a dancer to a singer in TOK, um, I feel like wherever the music going is so interesting for me and it's very inspiring for me to show people that I still have it, uh, have what it takes, you know? Definitely. Right now, the floor is yours. If there's anybody you want to big up that worked on the project, anything, leave some contact info, leave some info where they could stream this album here at King Bass. The floor is yours right now, Bassy. Yeah, people, you don't know it's a boy bass. See, the album is out King Bass. I want you to go check it out. I want you to stream it. I want you to buy it. I want you to download it. I want you to watch the videos. Um, and definitely just follow the movement. It's simple. B-A-Y-C. Whether it's bass music on all the digital platforms or bassymusic.com. That's where you find me. It's all about dance and music, Jamaican culture with an international flavor. Check out the music, tell a friend, and we have more music coming for you. You don't know. Big up. BC, thank you so very much for sitting down with us again here. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Enough respect. Thanks for having me. You know, blessings. Definitely. Let me give you an outro and get you out of here, all right? Yeah. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast album review, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com.